Hi, welcome to the Truth of Tao and Isaac. I'm Tao. I'm Isaac. Episode number 111 coming at you tonight. It's a big one, lots of fun adventures. So we're going to talk about the Lions game. It's an L, unfortunately. But we've got a W for the adventures of Isaac. It's some pretty good stories coming at you tonight. Then we've got a highly anticipated overrated movies and underrated movies debate between young fella and I. Didn't know it was a debate. So it's a debate. Well, it's, all, well, it's a discussion. It's a comparison, right? Like, I know you have difficulty competing up, competing with me intellectually. You can't even get the sentence out, bro. You, 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 I'm up one nothing already. <laughs> You're going to do okay because movies you're pretty good with. Thanks, Doc. Okay, off the top. Football's fun. Thanks for coming back, football. We really like you. Yeah, I missed your football. Yeah, we missed you a lot. College we like. Pro we like. It's all good. W for the NBA for the rest rules. Listen, I still think teams are going to find a way to dance around it, but it's a step in the right direction. Okay. So Giannis preparing to leave Milwaukee. Is that a thing? Basketball doesn't start for a month. So we're it, not, I think it's a thing. We're not doing a Gian, Giannis has been planting the seed for a very long time in a very respectful manner. If he's going to leave Milwaukee, why he would? Why? And I totally get it. I rock with it. Come to Miami. Come play with Jimmy. I'll just start the campaign now. Uh, but we're not talking about that. That's a whole segment for Coach Rob's episode. Fair enough. Tigers, they're going to spend this offseason and they're going to be for real next year. Like, <laughs> call it here first. Enough. Watch. Like, next May, you're going to be like, Dad, you were so right. Okay. Don't. Red Wings are going to make the playoffs. You're an extremist. You're having one of your episodes. Don't hit the table. Now let's keep working our way through the topics. And I just want to shout out to my Toronto people, Christine and Urban Paul and everybody up there. I got some sweet kicks from Urban Paul. If you're not watching us, you should go on YouTube and watch us. But either way, we'll post this picture. Urban Paul paints these. So we'll give him a shout out on the Instagram. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and he got me a picture. And he got me a fire shirt. And it's actually an fire awesome shirt. Like it's, it's a great awesome shirt. shirt. It's a great shirt. Yeah. So thanks, Urban Paul. Okay. Do you have any other radical off the top? So no, having... you like deleted my list. You edited my list. Did you just write down nonsense and it looks like you didn't take your medicine that day when you write your notes? Kevin Porter, L. Okay, we're not talking. Like, yes. L. Now, you have, now people are going to look up Kevin Porter and see what Kevin Porter is a bad guy. He's a bad dude. Okay. We knew he was a bad dude, though. I had two off the tops. One of them, the Dion Colorado thing is worth a conversation. It is, yes. So I'm I'm a college football fan. I'm more of a Michigan guy than I am a college football fan. Like I'm a, I'm an NFL fan. I'm a football fan, and the Lions fan. Whereas for college football, I'm a Michigan fan, and I watch other teams just because of how they affect Michigan. Colorado is not going to affect Michigan at all, likely. Um, but I'm very invested. I think it's really good for the sport. I think it is good for the sport because what happens is the NCA is just these stodgy old dudes who make these stupid rules. And I like the fact that, you know, Neon Dion is like pushing the establishment. Yeah, it is very cool. It's very different. In a lot of ways, I think it's Conor McGregor for UFC, what Dion is for college football. And those who understand both would agree there. We're just bringing in such a new such a new audience, so many new fans, very different, uh, but overall great for the sport. And I'm invested. I'm watching Colorado games now. Uh, Roman Empire. I'm going to do a bit on this. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So what is your knowledge of this? Uh, I think it started as an internet thing about three weeks ago where women started to ask men how often they think of the Roman Empire. Yeah. And I think I was asked, and I said, once every week or two. So, you know, two or three times a month. Yeah. You so, were asked so Braden, once a month. So Brandon and I had this conversation before I knew about it. And I, I pondered for like 15 seconds. And I said, I think once a month. That's kind of where I came to. Once a month. Maybe I averaged like 1.225 thinks per month with okay. the Roman Empire. Uh, it's really funny. And now like they're asking athletes about it and it's just a great random obscure thing. Uh, girl equivalent I've been told is Princess Diana and the Royal family, which totally checks out. Oh, it does. That's the equivalent Ro Roman empire. Current is Royal family. No, no, it no. Count. Princess, it's Diana. Be Princess Diana. Cause, Cause she ran in that one race at, for at school one time and everyone's like, wow, she's so cool. She ran with the kids, right? Like that stuff. Yeah. Um, so she that's did a lot of other cool things. Yeah, but that's the one. Like, if you look at Princess Diana, it's just going to be that clip of her running and everyone talking about how awesome she is. Is this like the school in Africa? I'm not sure, but there's everyone loves Princess Diana. Yeah. Yes. And it's the equivalent. That's the girl equivalent. It's a good comparator. Okay. The comparator? Is that a word? It is. Okay. Borderline word. Like sauce word. No, it's just for the educated. Okay. A lot of our fans are educated. They're going to be like, Isaac, listen to your dad. Okay. Let's talk about football. Football's awesome. Lions and the Seahawks. Unfortunately, we had a 2002 little nightmare scenario. We went to the game last year. 2002? Oh, sorry. 2022. Um, where Seahawks put up uh, 127 points. Yeah. 48 maybe. It's like 48, 45. Yeah. Just crazy. 
So, listen, Seattle obviously has an offense that eats the Lions up. And as much as the Lions, you know, made some improvements on defense, this game showed their flaws, right? And we'll talk about some of those things now, right? There's just not enough playmakers on defense. When I wrote this, I wrote three names down that are playmakers on defense. Hutch, I'll, I'll, okay. Yeah? Yeah, so Hutch, Gardner Johnson. And Branch. Okay, sure. That's it. That's the only th- three thing that like Campbell makes some plays. Uh, Houston made Houston made some Houston's plays. Made a couple plays. Now he's injured six to eight weeks. I'm worried about they just don't have enough impact guys. I believe this is the indicator where they need. I mean, right now they're one on one, and this Sunday is the tiebreaker against Atlanta. Okay. I'm worried that they're closer to the Seattle game than they are the KC game. What's your thoughts on that? Okay. Um, lots of uh, biggest issues of defense. When we walked out, so I was at the game. We're going to talk about that in a minute. When we walked out, we're like, okay, who looked good on defense? And we, we couldn't come up with a name. Hutch, we saw a couple times in the backfield, but like that's we saw him a couple times in the backfield. Not like he made a couple sacks. Like he was there a few times. Uh, so the pass rush was terrible, right? Geno Smith's a stat here: three point one one seconds average. Time to throw an all drop. Back. That's forever. In the NFL, that's forever. So week two, that was fourth most out of week two quarterbacks. He was missing left and right tackles. They're missing both starting tackles, and your exactly. edge, your, your edge guys just couldn't get in there. Um, we will. So I, uh, that's my defense bit. They couldn't make any stops, and when it came down, when Seattle won the toss, it's like, oh, okay. So they're just going to go down, and and then we're going to talk about the overtime rules, and we're just going to do this cycle, and that's what happened. Uh, it was a very sad game. Yeah, let's don't get into a position where you. Can be affected by a bad call or two, because there were a couple. Surely, Granted, surely. Don't put yourself in that position where it affects the game, or you lose the game because of it. And also, don't put yourself in a position where, hey, we may lose to a coin flip and never be able to touch the ball. Well, we're gonna talk about that now. I didn't you write want down to make some yeah. bad coaching decisions. Oh, well, I didn't write down the refs at all. That like I, I when I I'm I'm the first one to use the refs as a scapegoat. Okay, you are, you are yes. Respectfully, that's a fact. I did not even write down the refs here. Uh, your defense lets you down and there's some really poor coaching decisions and you're saying like, hey, hey, Campbell, like it's what he is, it's what he is, like super aggressive. No, no. My issues was the inconsistency in, in the way he coached game two compared Listen, to Listen, I, I agree with you. If you're going to be super aggressive, then that last drive in the fourth quarter, go for a touchdown. Well, they had it at midfield with about a minute and three timeouts, down three. Yeah. that's That was the situation. And You've they, got a field goal at that point. Go for six. They were ultra conservative and, and got the field goal off. Not comfortably, but got the field goal off. Uh, so that that was obviously really frustrating. I understand they were missing guys on offense. I just, that does not seem like how Campbell coaches. And, he, and even after the game, he said like, our number one priority was to make sure Seattle didn't get the ball back. Okay. Then you're putting it a 50-50 chance with the overtime rules. And if they get the ball back in overtime, then it's, then it's like you went for the touchdown and didn't get it. So that's my bit. I was driving back from Guelph, so I had to do the whole watch on ESPN, listen, whatever I can. The whole percentage win thing. I agree with Isaac. If you have the ball with a minute to play, three timeouts, the percentage of win is like 68% or something. Well, why are you giving that away and go back to 50%? Poor decisions. Yep. Three turnovers led to 14 saddle points. Obviously not. Like, yep. Goff played fine. He wasn't great. Uh, the pick six was terrible. That was really, really bad. But like he made some big time throws. It like could have does. been a rope issue with Gibbs, right? And I think his arm kind of got hit. But it, like just like visually, it just looked awful uh, when there's pick sixes like that. I will. So that's what I got in game. I didn't love the clock management. I didn't love some of the coaching. Uh, like I said, seemingly every defensive player had a bad game. Uh, that, that's my bit on the football itself. Okay, Do you have anything I, else? I have a couple questions for you. Goff, solid again. Just makes a lot of good decisions. He's never going to be an all pro. But that means you have to have good playmakers, a solid running game, and a good D. I think they've got good playmakers, especially when they get JMO back. They have a solid running game and an average D, maybe. Okay. So I, my question was, do they pick up one of these running backs? Hmm, Akers and Chubb. They're both gone. Well, Ch- Chubb is the guy who just blew out his knee. Oh, yeah, not Chubb. Hunt, sorry. Casual. And now, now I'm sad because now I'm thinking about Nick Chubb's career being done, and Nick Chubb's my guy. Not as much as Tom has a Nick Chubb jersey. My buddy has a Nick Chubb jersey, lives in Windsor. Wow. Imagine how sad I can't imagine is. there's a lot of those in the 519. Okay, so Cream Hunt, I don't want. Um, Acres, I don't hate Acres, especially since they traded away uh, Nothing, a like cheeseburger a... wrapper. Like, yeah. not even a cheeseburger, just a wrapper. Yeah. Um, look, like, there's some names out there. There are some guys they could still trade for. 
I, I just, I don't think, like, obviously Craig Reynolds, I think is terrible. I'm sorry. Respectfully. Yeah. He moves in slow motion. I think that if they were going to pick up one position group, D lineman. That, I was talking about that at school today with my guys. Biggest hole on the team. And then my buddy's just like, defense, defense. I'm okay. Where are the defense? Uh, he said secondary. Obviously, secondary didn't look great. I, I would say D tackle. There's a big hole in the D tackle. I don't think either of their D tackles had a tackle. Like, I don't think McNeil and, and Unzarike or whoever was there no. didn't have a tackle. And I would say McNeil's tackle. playing a lot of snaps and is still playing a decent amount. They don't seem to do anything. Andrika has, has given me okay minutes, but McNeil's not giving you a ton right now. Uh, obviously, linebackers like Anzalone was unplayable. Rodrigo got benched. Campbell's just going to—he's right. If he keeps playing well, limited limited time, then he's just going to be starting soon because he finished the game. I he's the starter. I think this, he, this this week could be the starter. I think he finished for Rodrigo because we were at, we were at the game, so it was kind of we were trying to keep tracks, and like six guys got injured, so it was very difficult to keep up with things. Um, so yeah, that's that's my bit there. Do we have any more on the game? Because this was a sad way to start the... Do we have anything nice that we can talk about before I transition to the adventures of Detroit? No, let's talk about Detroit, young buck. Okay, so I wanted to go to a Lions game. Tickets were... You're going to have to help me here. So, so Isaac is going to run with his stories, and what I will do is I will pretend... I will take the role of the uh, spectator and just ask a couple questions so that way Isaac may fill in the gaps if he misses any. So it's like an end game when Ant-Man is just kind of there and he's just happy and he's like playing the role of the audience and he's like trying like that's our perspective that's going to be Tal here right respectfully? Okay. I can smile like him. Yep. So we wanted to go to Ford Field it's kind of started with Adam and I because we went to Thanksgiving last year and that was awesome uh, so we're like we want to go to a game and what's the game to go to? Probably the season opener after beating KC maybe the Monday night game versus the Raiders, which you still might go to. And then the, the, P, the, game. the P word game, which we're not going to talk about yet. So we're like, like, hey, let's go. Standing room, I'll give you some numbers here. Uh, 180 US all in to get standing room tickets online. That's get, from the Detroit Lions website. Yeah, like official. Not third party. No, not resale. And then to get a seat, like to get an actual seat number, you're looking at like 230-ish US. So I'm not spending that much for a regular season game. I will say, so the attendance on Sunday... 66,434, mo- uh, fourth most in Ford Field history. And I think the most, the, the last game where we had the second most was Thanksgiving versus the Bills, where they had slightly more. And then there was some Monday night game, like 2011 versus the Bears, where it was an absolute madhouse. So this is one of the biggest games in Ford Field history. Uh, I, I wanted to go. I didn't want to spend that much. Bl- Braden and Blake, the two boys, were like, we're just going to buy a standing room. We'll go. You come with us. You do whatever you want. Okay. Adam was going with us, so it's four of us. Adam, Braden, Blake, and I. We cleared? Is everyone following so far? Yes, now you need to say when people bought tickets. Braden and Blake bought 180 standing room the night before. Saturday night. Yep. I'm still holding out. Adam is still holding out. Following? Sure. How many phone calls did you have with Adam Saturday through to Sunday morning? My Adam, Adam's my guy. Adam likes to call me a lot. <laughs> he likes Recall. to call. Recall. Okay. I'm going to say six. All right. Not relevant, and I don't have that number. I take the over. So... <laughs> We're going Sunday morning, the four of us. This is crucial to the story. The ski mask bit, I won't totally explain it because it's not really explainable. A cool guy on the Lions, Garner Johnson, is just like, wear ski masks because we're villains and we're nuts and that's what we do. Sold. Sure. Okay. I'll wear a blue ski mask. Like, I'm in. So we shipped it to uh, our buddy's house, like Sydney's house in our, like our, I don't know, God sister, our family friend. Yeah. Shout out to Sid. She's yeah. family. We shipped it there in Detroit because she's got a place in Detroit because she goes to school there. Respect. So... We're like, okay, we're going to go over early. We're going to stop at her place, pick up my ski mask because I just had mine there. And we're going to get the ski mask and then go to the game and then find tickets and watch the game. Okay. So we're like not too far out of the tunnel. And we see a dude on the street selling ski masks. And although we're picking up my ski mask, Braden and Blake want ski masks. Of course they do. So I'm like, boys, give me 20 bucks. I'll go get a couple ski masks because the guy says they're 10 bucks each. So I really quickly grabbed 20 bucks from Braden and Blake to get two ski masks and we don't really talk. Like, it's just like 20 bucks, ski masks, shooting her, go. Okay, I'll go. Grab 20 bucks. And then I think I said some words like, okay, meet at the place to get the ski mask. Okay, but like, don't go for it. Because we were in stop traffic. We're in stop traffic. We're not moving. No one's moving. I think I can take like a 45 second. It's about 11 a.m., two hours before the game. No, no, we're, like, we're at 10 right now. We're at 10 a.m. Okay. right now. We went early. Uh, good thing we did. So this story is going to get nuts soon, respectfully. So we go, I try to talk to the ski mask guy. Ski mask guy vanishes. He's just gone. And then I'm like, okay, let me find the car. I go back to where the car was. Every car is gone. There's just no cars. All They're all gone. 
So I'm like, okay, what do I have in my pocket? Do I have my phone? Nope, I left it in the car. Do I have my wallet? Nope, I left that in the car. So what do I have on my person? $20, running shoes. I have $20 and I have like four hauls because I'm a hauls guy. So I've got four hauls in my pocket and $20 bill. Okay. I'm in a foreign country. I'm away from my friends. I have no phone. I have no way to contact them. We don't have a real meeting spot. And I don't know where we're going because I don't have her address memorized. And I don't have her room number memorized. So I'm kind of in shambles. So I run from around the tunnel to Little Caesars Arena. Not a light run. I run there because I know she lives somewhere around Little Caesars. And I think I know the street. Not positive. So Had just, one of the boys been there with you? No. no. So you kind of told them it's around there, but they really had no idea where. I texted the address the night before. Oh, okay. Smart. One of the few smart decisions I made. I made some poor decisions here. I recognize that. Okay. So I, I run and I know the street. I won't say the street, but I'm like, I think it's this street. So I'm just looking for that street. Going up and down and I find the street. I find my way to the building. I'd only been there once, but I find my way there. Unfortunately, it's like pretty high security. You can't just walk in, walk out. You gotta get buzzed in or buzz yourself in. Uh, I don't have that power. So I had to wait until someone left and then kind of go in through the door before it locked. Like not super great. Uh, I didn't know her room number. So I'm just knocking on random rooms. They didn't let me in because I, I had the wrong rooms that I thought was the right room. Regardless, I'm kind of in shambles. I, I, have no, I have no way to contact anybody saying where I am. And I don't have any money to buy me something, to buy me tickets. That's also an issue. I don't have a ticket still. Don't forget. Are you following still? I think you're doing a good job. Keep, keep rolling. Get. I'm keep like, moving. I need to be visible. I'm visible. Because what if my buddies go here and they won't get in the building, but they need to see me. So I'm like, I'm going to go outside. Keep in mind, I have my jersey wrapped around my head. I'm sweating buckets. Like I look like a crazy guy. Because uh, I wanted to stand out. Because everyone's wearing a Lions jersey. But they'll see me with the jersey on the head and like, oh, there's shooting so I go in the street just in the hopes to flag them down and, and nothing, nothing. So now we're close to an hour, like 45 minutes. So I'm like, I got to talk to the police. I'm a missing person. I got to talk to the police. I see a Michigan State trooper car. I go up to the car. I turn on the, excuse me, sorry, just one moment. I believe officer. it's perfectly acceptable for uh, you to talk about the dangerousness of the situation. And let me be clear as the dad, when I heard the story after the fact, I was not scared at all. Nice. This is a little bit like Victor Drago and Ivan Drago. Victor's entire life, his dad had prepared him to fight. I have prepared Isaac his entire life for situations just like this. Built for this. I'm built Keep for running it. with it. Respect. I'm going to reference that bit later, actually. So good job you brought that up. Uh, so I am like, I have no phone. I have no wallet. I have to talk to the police. Convince them of my story. And also, like, find my buddies or something along those lines. So I, I you say... You need some help? I need help. So I say, you know, excuse me, officer. I got separated from my friends. My name is Isaac. I'm from Canada. I don't have my phone. I don't have my wallet. Can we... Can I try to call them? Sure. Do you know your friend's number? Nope. Of course I don't. Because, like, you just don't do that in, in 2023. But I know my number. I'm not sure if I know your number. Yeah. I know yours. Come on now. So I'm like, I know my number. Can I call my phone? Back in my mind, I'm like, I'm a do not disturb guy. So I knew it wasn't going to go through. But I'm not going to say, like, excuse me, officer. I have do not disturb on, so it won't go through. So I just keep calling. Uh, the, the phone log says eight calls. We have eight calls from me. And I'm not going to say the trooper's name. I'm going to say Trooper Johnson. But it was not like he has a name, and we're going to learn that name later. But I can't publicize it out of respect to this trooper. So we then start sending texts and I and I guess I can read the text. Should I read the text? I think that's perfectly acceptable. So, okay, you talk while I pull the text up. Okay, so one of the things now, they're starting to get some pressure on this because the boys have no idea where Isaac is. They recognize they have in their car, three of them. Isaac, generally, wherever he goes, he has two or three water bottles, his phone, <laughs> his wallet, and probably a snack, at least one granola bar. Football, I had a football. And a football. Yeah. So he's got none of these things. So he's pretty much running around Detroit naked. And although Detroit is a pretty safe city on game day, there's still some issues that you could run into. So you need to be cognizant of your surroundings, and you don't want to make yourself too vulnerable. And you also have to, you hesitate to go approach a cop because, the, listen, they have their guns ready like we have a pen ready. So you have to be careful with that. So... Uh, I was very subject to human trafficking is what you're trying to say. I was very vulnerable. If a human trafficker got me, I'm gone, respectfully. That just, yeah. It would have been like that. So here are the texts that the trooper sent to my phone 
when I was with him. This is Trooper Johnson with the Michigan State Police, period. Here's the best text. I have Isaac with me, period. Give me a call so he can find you, period. So he texts my number this, and I'm talking to him. And I think he starts to realize, like, is this kid playing a game with me? Because this is a ridiculous story. Why does? Why did he leave the car to buy ski masks? And then he's like, can you just meet them at your seats? No, I don't have seats. I was going to buy them. Oh, but you can't. And he's like, oh, you have 20 bucks in your pocket. You can't buy a ticket. I'm like, yeah, I know, because they have my wallet. So... Like, there was plot holes, but they're legit. Like, it's just the way it worked out. And the two people that had a ticket had standing room, so no designated spot. Correct. A lot of plot holes in this plan. Yeah. Uh, and I think Officer Johnson realized there's a lot of plot holes and was probably kind of entertained. Yeah, but then I think he realized, like, I was not messing with him. I wasn't on drugs. I wasn't drunk. Like, I was. I had a smoothie that morning, and that's all. Uh, so, I'm talking to Trooper Johnson. And I happen to stumble upon Ryan and Jason Polidori. They're just walking down the street. So these are like... Shout out Polidori's. So these are like two of my buddies from Windsor. I'm not going to the game with them, but I know them. And they see me and they're like, oh my God, Isaac, you're okay. What are you talking to the cop for with your jersey like that? Like, what's going on? I'm like disoriented. I'm like, I lost my friends. I don't have my phone. I don't have water or a ball. I don't have my wallet. I have nothing. They're like, look, come with us. Use our phone. Do whatever you want. We'll get Wi-Fi. We'll figure stuff out. No, so, explain how you did it. The Snapchat thing. Yeah, they, I would have signed into my accounts on their phone and contacted them that way. I don't think that was worth explaining, respectfully. So Some of the old folks don't understand how that works. I would have signed into my social media accounts and reached yes. out to them through social media because they don't know their yeah. numbers. Yep. Okay. MySpace is super helpful with that kind Just of stuff. Stop, bro. So <laughs> then uh, I start walking with them and and the trooper, tro- sorry, trooper Johnson was like, oh, you found your friends. And I'm like, no, these are two different guys that I happen to know that are just rescuing me out of the kindness of their hearts. Especially Ryan. Ryan just gave me a big hug and could tell. Like he, because I'm usually pretty like with it. He could tell like what's wrong with him. You're just a little rattled. I was a missing person. But you still kept it calm. But you're a little rattled. Oh yeah, I'm I'm making it work. I'm making friends. So as we walk, we only walk like 20 seconds, and I see my buddies. It's basically like the end of Shawshank Redemption when Red and Andy meet on the beach and hug, and it's just such a great shot. I had that. Like I fell to my knees, kind of like Gladiator, except he dies in the end. Yeah. It was like that. I don't just to clear up this. Yeah. Up. This is after the game and Isaac is still alive. I'm still good. Yeah, we yeah. made it. We made it. So we get back together with my buddies. We find them. They So we, there were some poor decisions made by everybody, right? Let's go through these poor decisions. Sure. Should I have left my phone and wallet in my car, even in, in the car, even if I thought it was going to be brief? No. Bad decision. You always have your phone in a strange place. Should I have communicated a meeting spot with them, a proper one? Yeah, I should have. Sh- the buddy system... Heavily underrated. Should someone have went with me? Should I have grabbed someone? We had four dudes. Yeah, two and two would have been a good decision. Another option, just wait 15 minutes and get the ski masks later. We don't need to get them at 10 a.m. All decisions that I didn't, I, I just, I made poor decisions. I recognize that. You're a little amped up. It happens to me sometimes. Let's talk about Adam, the driver. Should Adam have drove five miles the opposite direction without me? Probably not. Should he have maybe drove 200 meters and said, oh, wait, where's Isaac? Let's stop. Probably would have been a good decision, Adam, respectfully. He probably tried to call you, but you didn't have your phone because he likes to call you. Uh, no, he wasn't. You know, he was mad at me. So we saw each other. He was mad. So let's we're go, go to present day. Everyone made some poor decisions. Should my buddies have went with me? Yes. Should they have not let me run out of the moving car? Yeah, probably. Lots of bad decisions. Adam's just mad at this point. He's like, I'm just buying a standing room ticket now. I'm not scalping with you, Chutner. I'm just getting a ticket and I'm going in. We missed you for like an hour. This is a crazy enough day. Okay. Uh, uh, so here is the the rocky bit rocky tells adonis when a fighter ain't got nothing to lose he's dangerous when a fighter ain't got nothing to lose he's dangerous i had nothing to lose i'm dangerous right now i had nothing to lose so i'm like you guys go in i'm scalping i'm doing this uh adam's fed up he bought his ticket now i'm scalping we i have my phone i have my wallet i've drank in enough fluid so I'm, i'm feeling better the goal when you're scalping for one ticket what is the goal dad what is the goal Less than face value. Less than face value. Who are you looking to buy a ticket from? A fan who had a family member or a friend cancel last minute, right? Let's just say the four of us, four juniors are going over and mom decides she has some, she has to mark some essays. So she's like, I'm not going to the game. She has yoga. Yep. So the two of us and Alex, we've got one ticket. Now what we would do is we would just call one of 1,700 people and say, hey, you want to join us? Yeah, in. Perfect. Okay. But a lot of people, they don't operate. When they get that last minute cancellation, they just kind of shrug their shoulders and say, oh, well. And we have benefited from that exact situation many, many times. 
once that ticket changes hands to a scalper, you're done. Correct. So the goal when you're scalping is you just find the person with an extra seat. Here's a good business term, sunk cost. You're looking for someone with a sunk cost. They already paid. They're not looking to get reimbursed. They just have the sunk cost and it's there. So I'm walking. Anything they get is gravy. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that. I'm just, I'm saying I just need one. I'm walking around. I'm yelling. I need one. I need a ticket. Just trying to get in. Obviously, nicely and yelling it. And scalpers, the number they're throwing around is like 300, 300, 350. Still, it's an hour before game time now, like 50 minutes before game time. But that's quite a high number. Uh, I'm like, no, nah, I'm not just, I'm not going to do that. Worst case, I buy a standing room for 180. I bite the bullet. A dude does a double take when I'm doing my, hey, I need a ticket. And he's like, you need a ticket? I'm like, yeah, I'm just trying to get in. He looks like just a dude, not a scalper. He's like, uh, my buddy canceled on me last night. I got an extra ticket. I'm like, great. Yeah, I'm just trying to get in. My boy's got standing room. I'm just trying to get in. He's like, yeah, man. If you you know, if you want the ticket, it's yours. And I'm like, okay. And this guy seems really nice. I'm like, yeah, like how much you looking? So I'm expecting, you know, 200, 250, like we're in that range. Even though he's a dude, it's still hundreds of dollars. And he kind of hesitates. And he's like, uh, I don't know, a beer? And my jaw like drops. Like, a, He's like, a beer? A, a keg of beer? And he's like, you know, like, you know, a pop even? Like, that's what he said, a pop? <laughs> And I'm like, uh, and he's like, you know, like 20 bucks. And I'm like, okay. He has the tickets out. Sold. So I hand him 20, 20 bucks as soon as I can. Here's the, the funny part. 20 bucks comes back into the story. The $20 bill. That, the ski mask. That wasn't going to buy me anything because I can't. The officer said that's not enough to buy tickets. I gave to Ron. That's his name, Ron. We're going to talk about Ron. So I get in with Ron. My boys are just like, go, go, go. Figure it out. I have my phone now and I'm, I'm less disoriented. Ron and I are in line for 20 minutes, just talking it up. He's awesome. Works for Ford. Season ticket holder. His boy canceled. All of his buddies have season tickets together. Yeah, they have a single next to each other in the upper deck. And he's like, yeah, like take my buddy's ticket. It's all good. You buy me a couple Do beers. Do we know his name? Ron. Or no, his no, buddy? The buddy. I forget. I mud, forget. Mud. Sure. I don't know what that means. Uh, so I get in. I go in with Ron and I lose my friends again, but planned a planned loss because I have my phone now. So I get in. I'm amped up. We're standing room 50 yard line. We sneak low. We never get kicked out. We watch the game in the lower deck, like 45 yard line. Great seats. We're all buzzing. I've got my ski mask on, which we acquired. Um, and at halftime, we're like mid credit scene. I got to go see Ron. Ron's got to come back into play here. I can't just abandon him because we were, we're handshaking and we're on great terms, but we part ways, Ron and I. So I go up to see Ron. I'm yelling, Ron, Ron. I've got my ski mask on. So they're all kind of, all of his boys are like, who's this? I take it off. Ron goes, Isaac! And he's like, boys, this is Isaac. He took, whatever, my buddy's ticket. So then I'm dapping all them up and they're just dudes. Like they're like late 50s, all like blue collar car workers. They all work together, he said. Um, we exchange contacts, Ron and I. We're on great terms. And he's like, yeah, if you ever, if I ever run out of an extra, I'll, I'll text you. And I'm like, great, man. Like if I'm ever coming and need a ticket, I'll let you know. Uh, so Ron just wanted a beer and he made a new friend and he got a couple beers and he got a great story. And I got a couple good stories. So that would be the the bulk of it. The, the stuff with the police is quite pivotal to the story. Being lost in a foreign country, that's good. And well, then the, Ron. The officer making fun of you saying, so you're lost in a foreign country. You don't have your phone. You don't have your wallet. You actually can't get back to Canada. You can't contact your buddies. I can't get in the game. Yeah. I can't get in a bar. Yeah. On the other thing is, I'm three hours away. Three and a half hours. I wasn't even thinking about reaching out to you guys. Yeah. I mean, I could have, like if I was in Windsor, pop over with a passport, figure it out. But I wasn't worried. Well, yeah, because I didn't update you like, hey guys, just so you know. True, but even then, I'm not, I'm not worried. Yeah, thanks, bro. So uh, I'll wrap this up. Is there any questions? Like, did this, did this make sense? I think you answered all of the potential questions that would arise. Okay. Some lessons that I learned. Keep your phone and wall with you at all times. Just, there's no, even if it's going to be a minute, just keep them on. Buddy system. You learned it in JK? Yeah. You you obviously didn't sink in. Run it back. Buddy system is important. And then always communicate a meeting spot. Always communicate a meeting spot. Everyone made some poor decisions. It worked out. There's a second where it's like, forget the game. And if you get lost, I don't think any of you did that. Go back to the spot where you were lost together. So I didn't do that. That's what they did. I didn't do that. Smart plan that part. Well, you ran seven miles, so. Yeah. Well, they went back, but like 40 minutes after I had been there. Oh, see, that's too late. You just got to circle back 10 minutes later. Uh, yes. Everyone made poor decisions, but we've got a couple of great stories. And we were talking about, I think it was Pedro who said, sometimes a bad experience is outweighed by a good story. And sometimes a bad experience is not outweighed by a good story. I think the good story outweighs the bad experience. Sure. I don't even think it's that bad experience. It was an hour of like, how am I 
going to go to school tomorrow, right? Like there was a, like, how do I get back into Canada? Yeah. That was a question, but I made it and, and a couple good stories. That's what I got. Any further comments? No. Okay. Uh, movie stuff. You can set it up. So Isaac and I like movies. I think we've talked about movies a fair amount and we always debate as to what the third topic is going to be, right? So today we had Lions, Adventures of Isaac. Third topic, and I threw out a couple of really good ones. Isaac didn't like it. Okay, I'll blast you. No, no, you brought it up, so I'm going to blast you. He texts me and says, best pizza topping. First of all, it's pepperoni. Second of all, that's a 15-second conversation that people don't care about. Sure, but we get to do three or four good ones. No, and then he said some other dumb ideas. Yeah, there were were some good ones. Uh, So we have each have our own list created, percolated independently of one another. Underrated movies. Overrated movies. Yeah. This is going to get controversial. This is going to get controversial. I think we just got to hit underrated movies first because that's more interesting. Okay. What are we going to do? Like two at a time or one? Two at a time is good. Two at a time is good. Okay. I'll let you start. Uh, I'm going two W's right away because I'm the guy who gets the W's. I'm the guy who gets the wins. Warrior, kudos to Isaac for this movie because he told me about it 10 years after it was released. Great fight scenes. Great story. Super entertaining. If you ever want to watch good fight scenes... Just Google warrior fight scenes. Yeah, but now you have, it's a family movie. It's a family movie too. I talked about the good story part. Okay. Do you have another one? World War Z. Well written, good acting, an unusual creative solution to fighting the zombies. I like the zombie genre and uh, that's getting underrated for me. Two W's. Uh, Yeah, you like, warrior's great. World War Z you like more than me. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'll do, I'll do another it says it has war in the title. War Dogs. I don't know if you've seen War Dogs. I don't think so. This is Miles Teller, Jonah Hill, Arms Dealers. Awesome movie. Like it's a it's a guy movie, but it makes you want to be an arms dealer. Braden showed you want to be an arms dealer. A few years ago, uh, War Dogs, great movie masterpiece. There's going to be some mainstream ones and some non-mainstream sure. ones. Sure. Uh, I'll go with the non-mainstream one here. Ip Man. Oh, that's a good call. Ip Man is a war movie about the Japanese invasion of China. But like it's a martial arts movie and also like a family movie. Just it's in Chinese, so you got to deal with subtitles. You just have to read a little masterpiece. Might be on Netflix. Watch it. So good. Okay. I okay. guess a bit more background. We should also say some of these movies are movies that are quite well known and have a fair amount of prominence. But we just think they don't have the prominence that they deserve. Yeah, it's gonna get spicy and overrated. I yep, think for sure. Okay. I got two more pretty good movies that I think. We're thought of well, but I don't think they get the respect they deserve. Interstellar, so, so good. Deep thinking required. Yeah, but I know people like it, but... It's considered... Okay. You, so I know it's considered a great movie, but okay. not by enough. I don't hear it talked about enough. In film circles online, people act like it's Shawshank Redemption. I don't spend a lot of time in film circles online. Okay, it's just Twitter, dude. Like, okay. it's not Reddit. Got it. Finding Forster. Great mix of sports, literature... Well, mixing in a great mentor story. When's the last time you watched that, bro? No, I watched it like a year or so ago. It's good. Okay. And I love Sean Connery. Okay. Uh, Fury. I don't even know if you've seen Fury. I hope you have. Brad Pitt war movie. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Maybe my favorite war movie ever. Like, I just kind of stumbled upon it a few years ago. Real good. It's on Netflix. It's pretty emotional. Uh, it's It's a dude movie, but people should watch Fury. Great movie. Here's another one. Man of Steel. Oh, yeah. It's good. Man of Steel is Superman's my guy. This is it's a better coming of age movie than it is a superhero movie. Just there's a really there's so much good stuff in Man of Steel as just an actual movie. So that's, Yeah, and that's, the Marvel because Marvel has really kicked DC's butt for, you know, twelve years. Yeah. DC I coming think, back. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah, DC coming back. Uh Man of Steel is great. Go watch Man of Steel on Netflix. It's long, but it's great. Okay. Respectfully. Uh Amistad. Watch it again. It grabs history and it does a good job telling you what it was like back then. And the whole thing, because there's like, they're a bomb circle in the United States. It ages really well, considering all the racial tension that's happening today. Amistad. I saw Amistad a few weeks ago, a few months ago. I didn't love it. Like, it's good. I liked it. I think it's Spielberg, which is cool. I think so. But I didn't love it. Keep going. Fun little underdog sports story. (laughs) McFarland. I (laughs) like McFarland. You always love this movie. I really, nobody else does. (laughs) I'm not sure if there's anybody else that loves McFarlane, but in my eyes, it's good. I don't even know if I've seen that. Come on. I don't know if I've seen that. Uh, oh. Okay, I'm going to go with a couple here. Falling Down. Mm. Not a lot of people in my generation know it. Nope. It's, it's the Joker of its time. It's aged horribly. 
but it's so much fun and it's really well done. It's got some good acting. It's one of my favorites. I really, really like this movie. So Falling Down. Okay, and here's one where we're going to debate. Citizen Kane. I... As, oh, sorry, underrated? Yeah. I don't get it. Why okay. are you saying that? Okay. Well, I'll tell you why I'm saying that. So Citizen Kane came out in 1941. I am the first guy to say, this movie sucks. Like, Casablanca is not good. I don't like Casablanca. Gone with the Wind so, is six hours. I haven't even yeah, seen it. Yeah, Gone with the Wind and good. Casablanca, I will agree, they are overrated. Um, but... Citizen Kane? Okay, Citizen Kane is a masterpiece. It could come out today and it's, it would it would win ten Oscars. It would be Oppenheimer. Good. Rosebud, yeah, it's, it's pretty good, but I, I don't if people don't see like you haven't seen Citizen Kane for probably seventy three years. Twenty years. Okay. Watch Citizen Kane. It's on Amazon. It's two hours. It could come out today and it would be Oppenheimer level good. I for real mean that. Okay, I'm writing it down. I love Citizen Kane. That movie's awesome. Another old one that is considered very good, but people don't watch it or talk about it. Twelve Angry Men. 12 Angry yeah. Men came out in 1957. We watched yeah. that in a class with a bunch of like 19, 20 year olds in university and everyone was engaged. And it's a black and white movie. It takes place in one room. 12 Angry Men, maybe the best movie ever. Like it's that good. Good ones. Thank you. Uh, obviously my genre is a lot of 70s and 80s stuff because I'm old. I just picked a movie from the 40s and 50s, dude. Yeah, I know. Ca- but you're a casual. Say anything. 80s classic, a regular guy going for the smart, pretty girl, mixing in a bit of corruption with a dad. Very entertaining. It's a feel good movie. When you leave movies, you're supposed to be entertained. And I like to feel good. I don't like it when the bad guy wins. Say anything is a good one. Never saw, so I can't comment on you it. You should watch it. But that's Bre- a bad one. Breakfast Club. That's not underrated, dude. It is. Not enough people talk. Ferris is kind of the same genre. and People look at Ferris and Breakfast Club together, but they think Ferris is so much better. I don't know. I think Breakfast Club, it's got a great mix of characters. The cast is awesome. It's also has aged really well with the different dynamics in school. Can Watch we, Breakfast Club again. Uh, is Back to the Future in the same echelon of Breakfast Club and Ferris Bueller? Because if it is, Back to the Future trumps both of them. No. Back to the Future is not in that tier? No. Back to the Future is higher. Like what about people, Karate Kid? Oh, also higher. Okay, I agree. Uh, I'll go with another old movie, 1960, Spartacus. Great. Great movie. People don't talk about Spartacus. Braden says it's not underrated. I think it is. Uh, one of the best movies ever, especially war movies, maybe has my favorite movie moment in history, the I'm Spartacus. Go watch Spartacus 1960. It's not easy to find online, but it's really good. Uh, okay, my last one. I just watched this. You haven't seen it. I'm going to make you watch it. La Haine. Oh, yeah, you love this. Okay. French movie. Essentially, it's the French Fight Club. Like It's, it's Fight Club Ooh, if it was made by a bunch of French guys. Fun. And Boys in the Hood. I don't know if you saw Boys in the Hood. You probably did. It's great. Yeah. So it's like French Boys in the Hood, too. Oh, that's awesome. Three young French guys during police brutality protests in like the mid '90s. Uh, really, really good, heavy, super well made, pretty cool movie. Uh, I love La Haine. Like it's shocking. It's really, really good. It's in French. It's in French. Awesome though. Okay, I just got a couple honorable mentions. I got from sure. some of my boys at work: Tony, Ron, and Urban Paul. Okay. Do the right thing. Urban Paul, of course, loves Do the Right Thing. I don't love that movie. Hey, Urban really likes. It. I like it too. Okay. Crimson Tide. Never saw. Ooh. What anything with Denzel? I mean, Denzel is absolutely amazing. Oh, okay, but it's Denzel. So, so, so I got to go back to back. I had another Denzel, and actually, I thought for sure you were going to mention this, John Q. You really oh, like John, John Q. Really good. Yeah, that's really yeah. good. Okay. So I mean, here's the thing: these movies we think are both good. There's nothing that Isaac said that oh, don't watch that movie if you haven't seen it. My only question about one is Citizen Kane. I mean, it was ranked like I'm sure if you look at. All-time movies list, it's probably a top 20. Citizen Kane and 12 Angry Men like are, are considered two of the best movies ever. But how many people under the age of 30 appreciate that? It's that. that I guess that's the question. And then it's like, people saw it once and it was like, okay, it's good, and never watch it again. Yeah. That's why I want to bring it back it's into like the It's like Breakfast Zeitgeist. Club. Does, did Braden and Blake appreciate Breakfast Club? Yes. I don't know. High schoolers love Breakfast Club. Like, not high really? Like, people of my generation, Breakfast Club has a follow-up. We'll ask them. We'll ask them. Okay, overrated movies. This is where it's going to get like pretty, pretty heated. So the easy number one overall... Titanic. Okay, I have Titanic. Do a bit on Titanic. Yeah. Go for it. Like, it's a stereotypical love story and a big boat sinks. Period. Okay. Like, there's so much love in it. Oh my God, people watch it a hundred times. Like, the funny thing is, up until like Raiders of the Lost Ark and movies like that, people never watched movies more than once or very rarely did they watch movies more than once. But some of this genre created, hey, movies you can watch many times. I don't know why you're going to watch... A stereotypical love story and a big boat that sinks 
More than once. You want to talk about people watching it more than once. Titanic made $2.26 billion at the box office in 1997. So that's not even inflation. Yeah. That's the fourth most ever. That's like $11 billion today. Yeah. If I were to do inflation, like it might be the second highest grossing movie ever. Uh, I do not. I, I wrote it down. I do not like Titanic. It's melodramatic. It's slow. It's boring. I just don't really get the appeal there. Respectfully to Titanic and all those that were on it. It's just not for me. Uh, okay, go ahead. Another overrated movie. Gone with the Wind. Night. Okay, I thought you, there was a stint where you thought you acted like it was awesome, even though you hadn't seen it. You know what, I think I might have been influenced by some of the top lists. Okay. And I watched it again, I watched a clip of it again a couple years ago, I'm like, I'm sure I fell asleep three times, I'm like, I remember falling asleep the first time I watched it, and Daniela woke me up, I'm like, why'd you wake me up? The same stuff's happening, nothing. Nothing. Southern debates. So I never saw it, but I agree. Good, overrated. You're, you're good. Okay, should I just drop the biggest, the most overrated movie of all time? Sure, I think I know what it is. I'm going to circle it. No, it's not that. It's The Whale. Okay. That's yeah. maybe the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. It was gross and it was bad. I hated everything about it. We were in theaters. We were just scoffing the whole time. Yeah. It was awful. It was and like, take away the gross, unwatchable bit. Uh, it was, the acting was poor. The, the writing was stupid. It was edited weird. The conversations didn't seem natural. People, like, it got a lot of buzz, uh, and I hated it. I thought it was so, like, I just never want to watch it again. Fair enough. You, I thought you'd do a bit on The Whale. Here. I didn't. You know what? I, I didn't think about it. It's, like, we watched it in theaters and walked out, and, like, that was, like, the worst thing we've ever seen, right? It bad. Yeah. It was like Rock Monster. I'd rather watch Rock Monster for sure. <laughs> okay, now's the time. Explain Rock Monster. Yeah, rock Monster is an 80s Eastern European. <laughs> I don't think it's 80s, is it? Maybe 90s. Okay. 90s Eastern European, like, you know. A few of us go on some trip, and there's just this crazy rock monster in this little village. It's like Theo and Christian put some rocks together in the backyard and did some stop-motion film. It's okay. terrible, but entertaining. So the rock monster origin for us, so when, I, when he would drive me and my sister to school when we were little, I would be up early, and he would be ready, and my sister would take three hours to get ready. So we'd be in the basement just watching whatever. <laughs> Crap. So I'm like fine. seven watching whatever on the sci-fi channel. <laughs> and Rock Monster was one of these movies that was always on. And oh, we didn't so really bad. have access to a lot of movies back then. So a sci-fi channel, you'd get some goofy yeah. 10 it was minutes, either like minute entertainment. Stargate. Stargate, yeah. A Stargate or, SG-1. Or it was some random Eastern European horror movie with a budget of $17. Yeah. Rock Monster. Uh, Harry Potter. Over I knew you'd put Harry Potter for sure. Sorry, Omar. My boy Omar is a Harry Potter guy. Yeah. Look, 11 movies made almost $10 billion. 11 Ele movies? Because they made like spinoffs and garbage. Wow. that's I knew there was a lot. Totaling almost $10 billion at the box office. I should say it's also acceptable to put categories like Harry Potter movies, 11. That counts as one, but it's okay to say one. Yeah, you, don't to, you don't need to say Sorcerer's Stone and all those things. Yeah. What, what's that one called? Sorcerer's Stone. Nice. Something. I have PTSD. Right? Yeah, yeah. I have PTSD from Harry Potter because okay. there's a stretch where I couldn't choose what was on TV when Alex, my sister, was watching. Well, you couldn't talk. Yeah. Uh, big, so big lisp. So I just had to watch Harry Potter, always. Uh, so I have flashbacks from Harry Potter. I don't really get the appeal. Just watch Star Wars if you're going to watch something like that because okay. Star Wars is better. All right. Go ahead. Um, Avatar. Classic. Classic. Overrated. Go Classic. for it. There's no need to ever watch it twice. The way movies are made. You, you want to watch this several times just to see what you missed. And like the first time I watched it, it was kind of entertaining. It was pretty cool with the special effects. Period. That's it. Most, why, why does everybody love it so much? $2.92 billion. It's the highest grossing movie ever. And it's not that good. You had it on your list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why I have the number there. It's gimmicky. It's goofy. I don't really like it. Do you have another um, one? Yeah, category. All anime you except for Bullet Train. Because Bullet Train's kind of borderline anime. You haven't watched any anime. I've tried to watch a couple for Aiden and this guy that I used to work with. So I have a couple even. of clips. So talk about anime. Because I've ne I've watched zero. It's like like these kind of Be strange careful. Japanese characters, cartoon, just really dumb and weird. I don't get it. <laughs> so I've never watched it. You might have offended those anime fans that I, listen to the show. We don't have a lot of anime fans who watch the show. Probably not a lot of crossover. No. Um, I've never watched anime when I watch cartoon Tell you movies. What. Let's put a list of season ticket fans for the Detroit Lions. There's like a lot of them. There's 50,000 of them now. Okay. And then in the Windsor, Detroit area, we'll call it about four and a half million people. Okay. There's not a lot of overlap on those lists. I got it. I'm not going to watch anime anytime soon. My cartoon stuff is just Pixar and I love it. Um, and some DreamWorks stuff like Shrek. Okay. 
overrated. I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, and I, I'm sorry. I just apologize in advance. James Bond. You knew yeah. I was going to say this. Yep. There's, I knew you were going to say Bond. There's 27 movies. Uh, they're n- like very few of them I think are good. I need to revisit them. I recognize that. I just don't like people act like James Bond's the best movie character of all time. I just don't think he's on the tier of Indy or Luke or Wolverine or Ripley or any of those Rocky, awesome Rocky sure Rambo. Rambo. I just I don't like James Bond that much. I, I don't hate James yeah. Bond. It's just like John people McLean. people love James Bond and I'm like, okay, it's cool. He wears cool suits and drives cool cars. I get it. He shoots people. Uh just not for me. Don't In love the it. 80s, I really like James Bond. Now it's mildly entertaining and I watch the odd scenes like Casino Royale I thought was pretty good. Yeah, that was good. But I'm sure I've missed a couple over the last 15 years. Like, there's just 27 of them, and I think maybe five of them are awesome. Okay. Maybe four. Do you have one more to name? Or you I've got a few more. Yeah. Do okay, you, i got a couple more still. Go. Speed. It got a lot of hype for a long time. Keep it at 50. That's the entire plot. That's it. I haven't seen for years, so I can't speak on yeah. this. That, well, I've just I've, I've told you what happens. Okay, what else do you have? All the bad boys. They're boring. Oh. They're silly. Oh, I like that. I no, like. No, I don't. I don't. They're not very good. Okay. I like the characters, but they're just the movies are not very good. Uh, I like Bad Boys One a lot. Bad Boys One is good. Okay. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. That's lights out. These are so overrated. Uh, there's five movies. Maybe one of them is good. Each one is six hours. The same thing happens every time. Two. Caden loves my boy. Caden like brainwashed us in grade school to watch these with them. Just Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> I just don't like. I've had bad experiences. Not for me. Not for me. Okay. Uh, do you have any more? I've got. I've three. I got more. more. Okay, go. Space Jam Two. You didn't see that? No, you didn't see it either. But the fact that they made it and it got hype means it's overrated. Uh, okay. All right. That's I can't just speak my reputation. On it. Probably nope. sucks. Yep. I talked to a couple people that saw it. They said it sucked. Like if I saw Fast and Furious, I would say it's overrated. But I haven't seen any of them. I have Fast and the Furious next. Did you see them? Uh, I saw a couple clips here and there, but never enough to like watch. You just fall asleep. Okay, they drive cars quickly and they try to come up with weird little plots to. Make them drive cars quickly. Okay. That's cool. it. That's the movie? That's all 11 of them? Yep. Okay. Is there 11? I think 11. There was one of them where they introduced a lot of stars. Like maybe Shirley Theron or something. Well, I, there's a lot of big names. I had thoughts about watching that one. There will, like there's a lot and a couple are supposed to be okay. I like Shirley Theron. Yeah, I know. I haven't watched any of the Fast and Furious movies. It's not going to happen. I guess Jason Momoa, like Aquaman's the bad guy and he's really funny, they said. Oh, so, I like him. But they said it's like funny bad, so I might watch that. Okay. Uh, Bird Box. Do you remember? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, dumb. Okay. 45 million viewers within the first week on Netflix. The internet just wouldn't stop talking about Bird Box. But was it like during COVID or something? Or was I, think it was I think it was a little before. I think it was a little before, I think. Just like, I'm glad I wasn't on Twitter then because I think it just would have been Bird Box. This movie came out and everyone talked about it and it's not that good. I don't really get She calls her kids like boy and girl and they don't see each other. Stupid. It's, Didn't like it. Yeah, it's dumb. Watch A Quiet Place. Okay. I have two more. All the horror movie remakes Friday the 13th, Jaws. Halloween, the remakes are generally pretty bad. Do people think they're good? I think people do. Okay. I don't think they're Again, overrated. Like, this is not a recent take. This is kind of an 80s and 90s take where they'd be advertised, oh, Friday the 13th, part three in 3D. Got all the hype and people watch them like, they're not that good. Yeah. Maybe at the time when they came out, they're a big deal. Yep. Not because now like the like there is like, the horror movies they're that come out. a bit player. Yeah. A bit player. I have two more overrated movies. Okay. Clockwork Orange. I don't like it. I liked it. Did you read the book? No. Okay, it would help if you read the book. Okay. I shouldn't. I shouldn't have to read a book to like a movie. I know. Okay, that's fair. Uh, it's just hard to watch and it's over the top and I didn't think it's good. And maybe the most overrated movie. Do you have one more? Yeah. Okay, what? Matrix. Oh, that's such. I didn't write that down. That's great. Go for it. People Talk about love it. The Matrix. Love it. They talk about this alternate universe. <laughs> we're in the Matrix. Yeah, and we're in the Matrix. Like the thing that I like best about the Matrix, I'll tell you what I like best about the Matrix. The credits. No, that no. means it's done. There's a great Matrix example. When we're playing pickleball, we don't play normal pickleball. We try and smash it at our bodies. When we move outside of the way, we, we say Matrix. That's the best thing about the Matrix. Okay. Which isn't anything. Okay, I'll just I'll give you a lob, Chris Paul to DeAndre Jordan because I know we feel the same about this one. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road, go for it. I, I don't get it. Like, all they do is drive down a road and like yell and yell, <laughs> and they're just made up stupid. And it got so much hype. Thank you for the lob, easy dunk. By the way, I'm seven foot one and I've got a forty inch vertical, but that's besides the point. Somebody who knows about movies, can they please explain to me 
why that was good. Because I had a couple of people trying to explain to me why it was good. They were unable to explain it. I think they just bought into the hype. Because the old, again, some of the old Mad Max were pretty decent. One and two are awesome. Two is great. Yeah. Uh, Fury Road, there's nothing there. And it's like weird. weird fat guy in a mountain and then on the road. <laughs> That's it. Really like weird paint in oh, the horns. Oh, man. Like, Thank you for the lob. Here's the confusing thing about Mad Max. So it made a ton of money. But it came out and everyone was like, Oscars, Oscars, best picture, best picture. I know. And then we were kind of excited to see it because, oh, I, I didn't think because we had saw the previous couple and we're like, we didn't think it was, but this got so much hype. So I watched it when I was 12 or 13. I'm like, this is not good. And and we didn't really get it. And then I watched it during COVID a couple years ago when I watched all of them. It's not, not good. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's, it's really below weird. not good. But I don't, the thing that I don't understand is the Oscar bit where it's like, if you're going to nominate a cool action movie for an Oscar, uh, like the Avengers... I, I, I don't understand because, I mean, obviously there's been periods of time where the Oscars, they kind of go into quite alternative routes into who they're yeah. nominated, but Mad Max Fury Road didn't really check those boxes. No, it's not. Like, good. was it, like, with all due respect, was... Be careful, dude. Was it directed or produced by... Dude, stop. No, I don't think so. No? Just stop. By a robot or something? No, not, not no? AI. Okay, it's not AI? Okay. I've Mad Max Fury Road Shout overrated. out to Pedro and Sarah for the funny AI stuff today because no one understands some that good means. content. Do you want me to post that? Uh, I don't know if that's appropriate. It's a little bit goofy. Well, okay, now, you're act- now you have to okay, explain because so now they think it's something weird. Pedro dude. and Sarah are two smart, cool people who Isaac works with. But I think they both like me more than they like Isaac. And that's okay. It happens a lot. They don't, bro. I think they do. You ain't going to see Travis if you keep talking like that. Your friends, if they had to choose between me and you, they're pretty much choosing me. For so Travis? Don't be throwing that. Yeah. No shot, bro. First of all. Name I'm, one Travis Scott song. We're doing it now. Name one. Uh, Name the, the jerk one. What? <laughs> Jank jerk something like that. I was, it, was, it, was in, it, was in, it was in a rhyme. No. What? Yeah. Name one Travis Scott song right now on I can't, air. I'm working, I'm working on other stuff. One Travis Scott song. You know some of them. I one of them. Know. What mode do you go in? There's a mode you go in. It starts with an S. S mode. Sicko mode? Oh, sicko mode. Yeah, you know, that's you right. You like sicko mode. I do like sicko mode. Okay. I haven't right. really spent much time on Travis. Yeah. Uh, what were we talking about? You're talking about my coworkers and oh, how they yeah. like okay. you more. So Pedro and Sarah, they, I don't know, downloaded some type of AI app and a couple of people in the workplace, they took pictures of them and then AI created pictures. And so Sarah taught me a little bit about AI. So they produced some rather entertaining pictures of me today. Uh, just like they, they six just put like wigs. They put hair on you and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it just looked funny. Yeah, and I think it should be able to post, but we're not, and that's fine. I don't know. We'll talk about it. Okay. Wrap it up. Uh, talk to the fans. Okay, episode number 111 in the books. Thank you for the support, fans. Thank you for the ideas. We've got a couple of guests. We need to get Coach Rob here, and we need to get Dorn here. Yeah. They've been on the bench, hungry, hungry, waiting to come in. we got to line that up. I, I talked to we're, we're getting there. Okay. I got him. Good. Let's get him lined up. Okay. Say goodnight. Good night, everybody.